I'm constantly asked, DSLM Finance, what's the easy way to get into property? Or maybe DSLM Finance, I want to get into property, but it's going to take me a long time to save for that deposit money. Is there a quicker way to do it? I know how hard this can be guys, which is why today I've got a video to present to you and it's on a great way to get into property investing. If you were to fuse a stock with a property, then this form of investing will probably be the result of the two. And what I like about it the most is that it's simple to understand guys, requires a relatively small amount of money too, and relatively small amount of research to do it compared to other investment strategies. So in other words, you literally have no excuse if you want to get started investing in property, guys, because you have this method right here to do that with. But before I get going, could you do me a big favor? And that's to hit the like button, share this video too, and subscribe on the notification bell as well. So if you couldn't have guessed by now, I'm on about REITs. A real estate investment trust allows investors to indirectly own and slash or manage commercial real estate. So in other words, instead of you directly owning that real estate, you're putting your money towards a REIT, which does that on your behalf. Now you can invest in REITs by buying their shares in the stock exchange. In the UK alone, you have roughly 50 REITs, guys, in the London Stock Exchange. This attracts, at this moment of time, roughly £50 billion into the market. This is a lucrative type of investing to do. And it shows in the high returns that they tend to produce. And they're also not tight with their money as well. They tend to dish this out to their investors in the form of paying out really high dividends too. But before you guys go running off trying to find every REIT under the sun, it's important to know that generally speaking, there's five types of REITs to get invested in. So you got to decide which one you want to be involved with or how many out of them. There's healthcare REITs. As the name suggests, this allows investors to get into a very niche part of the commercial real estate market, the healthcare industry. For a lot of investors, they deem this as a very strong and effectively safe type of investment just because of the nature of tenants that they're dealing with. By providing hospitals, nursing facilities, medical centres and retirement homes, things along this nature, it's extremely unlikely that their tenants are going to go into rent arrears or even worse, bankruptcy just because the healthcare industry tends to get so much huge backing from the government. And for a lot of investors, this sense of security attracts them the most. Next, you have arguably the most common type of REIT, and that's retail REIT. Now, if you look at your local shopping center, the chances are it's probably owned by a REIT. Retail REITs tend to make the most amount of money from the rent that they charge their tenants, i.e. the retailers. Now, whilst this can be a very lucrative form of investing to get into, it's still heavily dependent on their tenants paying their bills on time. And I know you guys can see where I'm going with this because with the current pandemic, coronavirus, guys, the retail industry has been heavily affected. Hence, I feel, in my opinion, that this type of REIT investment would have also been affected too in a bad way. With companies like Debenhams going bankrupt during this pandemic, this comes to no surprise. But I still want to urge as well, it depends on what type of retail REIT you're investing in. You know, ones that might specialise in the clothing industry, for example. Those ones might tend to be affected right now, just because the clothing industry isn't doing well during this pandemic. But if it was to specialise in the supermarket industry, then it's a different ball game because we all know how well the supermarket industry is thriving in this pandemic, guys. Next, you have residential REITs. This is for owning and slash or managing buildings that have multiple apartments in them or for manufactured houses. As you can imagine, your main focus here is to ensure that there is enough demand, job growth and population for the very limited supply of housing that your REIT is offering their tenants in that area. You can also have mortgage REITs. This is where you put your money towards mortgages as opposed to putting your money towards the real estate. Now, some people might find this a bit confusing, but it's very simple when you think about it. And to be honest with you, a lot of people are doing it without them even realizing that they're doing it anyway. Every time you put your money in a bank, by you putting your money in the bank, what you're basically doing is you're giving the banks an opportunity to take that money out and potentially borrow it to other people. Other people that want to take out a loan, maybe for getting a property in the form of a mortgage, guys. But the cheeky part of it is that they don't even need to ask you to take your money in the very first place and just to rub salt on an injury, they get to keep majority of the gains, you know, from borrowing your money out. Whilst if you're very lucky, maybe you can have some crappy interest rates with it. Whereas a mortgage REIT gives you the cut that you deserve relative to how much money you've put in. 
But as you guys can see with the banks, you know, just knowing how rich they are, this is a very lucrative type of investment to get into. And finally, you have office REITs, as you can probably have guessed. These REITs allow you to invest in office-based real estate. If you drive around your local area, chances are it probably won't take you long to see an office let sign put up by a REIT. Office REITs tend to sign up their tenants to really long-term leases, which is good because you know it's consistent money coming in. But what I will say though is that this pandemic has probably flipped everything upside down because it's forced companies to work from home. And from that, I reckon a lot of companies have realised that actually they can take all of their business online, hence reducing the need to rent out huge office spaces. So don't be surprised if this form of investing is badly affected in the future too. Regardless, I hope I've shown you guys a lucrative way to diversify your portfolio. This, along with the fact that it's got a lower barrier to entry, makes it such a great way to get into the property industry for a lot of first timers. I would still say it's important to do your research before investing and to also look at the influence coronavirus will have on it too. But nonetheless, you guys can see this type of investing is great for any investor at any stage of their journey. Before you guys go, make sure to like this video, share it too, and subscribe with the notification bell on as well. It's your favourite YouTuber, DSL and Finance, sharing my thoughts and my experiences with you guys every Sunday at 3pm. Have a great day, people. Bye. Oh.